Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you especially to Shuti to uh, you know, accommodate us at the last moment. Um, I will quickly run you through, uh, through the presentation so that we have more time on the question answers. Um, as for my background, I uh, worked with Reuters Market Light uh, in the business development part. Uh, prior to this, I worked as an entrepreneur and I've also worked in the corporate banking industry, I worked with Bank of America and a couple of private equity funds. I'm an MBA from uh, uh, IMD, uh, Switzerland. Um, all right, the first question is Thomson Reuters. What's Thomson Reuters doing in um, uh, crop advisory? Uh, Thomson Reuters is a $12 billion revenue company. Most of the revenues come from the financial industry. Uh, in one of the projects, uh, joint projects with Stanford University, an idea was born. And in this few years, that one page idea has turned into a full-fledged rapidly growing, self-sustaining business model. Um, we knew from the very start that um, Reuters Market Light, which is that idea that I spoke about, could not be an elitist, academically beautiful business which was impossible to implement. So the first thing we had to do was to understand what the market really, really needed, the end user really needed. Research was carried out identify the critical information that the farmer needs. So these are the few questions that the farmer needs the answers to. So uh, in order to have a very, very razor sharp focus on the final product, on uh, what the farmer needed, these questions were identified, a decision was taken, we will provide the answers to these and only these. Um, so this basically helped us uh, you know, really create a product which fitted with the farmer's requirements. Uh, a lot of people have already spoken about the deficiencies in the market, won't go into that. Uh, so what was done from Reuters Market Light side to set up the infrastructure to provide the answers to these? In a nutshell, this is what was done. Uh, looks quite simple. Um, you aggregate information from various sources, put it together, have the quality checks and validations, uh, run it through the system, and then send it through the SMSs. Uh, looks easy, but what are the challenges? The first and the foremost challenge is the content. Uh, uh, we knew that from the very start that in order for this to work, the end user has to trust us. And that trust uh, from our 150 years of experience across the markets, financial markets in the world, we knew comes from three golden rules. Fast, accurate and free from bias. Uh, very quickly we realized that most of the publicly available information in the crop advisory uh, did not sort of live up to Thomson Reuters standards um, on these three factors. So we had to create it all on our own from scratch. Um, that's, uh, that was one. Second is uh, in order to actually deliver on these three factors you have to have substantially uh, robust processes and systems in place. And those processes had to be put up from scratch again in the Indian market. Um, just to put things in context, when we provide information to uh, farmers on crops, the same attention to detail is given as is given to the data and information that we provide to bond traders and equity traders in the financial markets in London and New York. So, uh, and this, this is something that the end user appreciates. Uh, we'll see how this actually does turn into uh, something which the farmer appreciates. So how do we generate content which lives up to these standards? More than 500 um, content professionals trained by Thomson Reuters are now present in 1,300 markets at the district level, those mandis at the district levels. Um, they're covering more than 250 crops. Um, and then all this information which is generated is quickly validated in the first half of the day, runs through the system, um, aggregated, and then um, goes out in the form of SMSs to the client. So what the, client, what the end users get is a very accurate and uh, unbiased data. So what is this information? Each end user uh, selects two crops and three markets in his vicinity. And when you say crop, it's not just rice, it's the 
variety specific variety of rice or specific variety of soya bean and stuff like that so he uses two crops three markets in his vicinity his language and uh, immediately he starts getting sms's on those three uh, or four basic criteria which he has selected and these are local languages you you can talk about you know telugu or tamil or punjabi or whichever language you're talking about uh, so it's scalable because it goes through the sms's at the same time it's highly personalized when you talk about weather forecast obviously as uh, the gentleman from imd mentioned uh, it's district level forecast uh, then what this gives us is a platform which gives these three four sms's which he gets daily how does it really benefit it benefits because thomson reuters not only uses the information which is uh, picked up from the market it analyzes it by putting it together with the global database of information that thomson reuters generates daily um a soybean farmer can get the information a news in the evening that um uh the prices of soybean are expected to fall or rise in the next one week because in brazil this has happened so that's the kind of information predictive information which comes in and it's highly accurate because this is the same information on which uh, commodity traders sitting in chicago and new york actually work uh so uh, as of now uh, 15000 villages uh, are covered 300000 uh, subscribers are there which translate into more than 1.2 million users because each subscriber shares it with three or four other um, Uh, of his neighbors so uh in the end what does this translate to these are some of the actual feedbacks that we receive from farmers uh either through our call center numbers or through the good old fashioned snail mail the information uh, as we said is also another few examples of the news that he gets uh, what are the timings at which power cuts will happen in your village so that he can have his uh, generators or you know water pumping systems accordingly what timing will the canal release the water uh some point in time you may uh, realize that uh, our people down there would realize that there is a uh, disease for a specific variety of crop which is catching up same day by evening the farmers going that crop in that region will get a message if you notice for example if you notice a white patch on your leaves in your soya bean crop this is the action you need to take so people take predictive action accordingly again some more examples of the feedbacks that we receive um so people actually make money out of this uh and uh a proof of the same is the fact that 95% of people who buy recommend it to others as well and almost everyone who buys once buys it again uh more than that as someone mentioned that most of these services that are offered right now in the market usually are bundled with something else so the farmer really doesn't have control over whether he is renewing it or not he just gets it by default reuters market light is carrier independent non bundled so whoever is buying it is buying it purely for this information and this service and it's growing almost uh, at a very rapid pace uh, to give you an idea it's reached about 1 million farmers and uh, we project it to grow almost double or triple in the next 2 years so every year year on year for the next 2 years and the idea is to reach at least 10 million farmers in the next uh, few years i can't disclose the exact projections but yeah uh challenge you have an excellent product but how do you actually reach out to the farmer how do you actually uh, you know deliver it to the end user we learned from we uh, started off by using various different models uh, there were challenges in logistics and stuff but finally learning from the telecom industry this is a scratch card very similar to the prepaid card that the telecom industry uses you buy this and it's obviously not a free service people are happy to pay for it though uh you buy this scratch the number call us on the toll free number the service starts and then of course you have to 
you know, do some marketing and sales effort around it. And there's substantial uh, effort which goes into this, educating the farmers. There are teams, uh, more than 300 people who are actually dedicated to getting this through to the end user. And then through the channel partners as well. Uh, obviously, there are opportunities for public-private partnership. NABAD is a uh, key example. Uh, this is slightly outdated because this has grown substantially from the time uh, this has been written actually day before yesterday. Some new development has happened, developments have happened, which has which have taken this to a totally new orbit. Uh, initially, uh, this is how it started off. Uh, NABAD has family, uh, sorry, um, uh, farmer uh, clubs in villages. Uh, so through NABAD channels, a few of these subscriptions, two subscriptions for each farmer club are paid for by NABAD and distributed to those uh, uh, farmer clubs. Uh, that way NABAD obviously has huge amounts of uh, funds within their own uh, uh, you know, sanctions. So they use those money, that money to take the service to the end farmers. And that uh, once the farmers start using it, they realize the value of it and then it spreads in those communities by its own uh, momentum. Uh, just a few projections. This is where the NABAD partnership is projected to grow. We are at the second level, the RML now, RML NABAD now, it's projected to go there. Uh, the value generated at the farmer level as of now is about 5,000 crores and is projected to grow to about 50,000 crores in the next few years. Uh, huge recognition around the world, as we can see, Financial Times, World Economic Forum, London Business School, so on and so forth. Uh, Professor C.K. Prahlad's uh, book, uh, Fortune on the Bottom of the Pyramid, if you've read it, uh, four pages are dedicated only to this model. Uh, it has been shared with uh, on the multilateral uh, platforms, couple of governments. Uh, and obviously, the idea is once you set it up over here, this is going to go international. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Any questions for me? Yeah. Please, very quickly. We have four minutes. Okay. I'm Dr. Tamir Azhar from Veterinary University. I just want to have one information regarding uh, the SMS, whether you are providing the information on animal husbandry aspects also? On animal, animal husbandry and veterinary side? Uh, yes, there have been some pilots, for example, on. Uh, on sericulture and on uh, fisheries, a couple of pilots have been done. Uh, they have been successful, though, because of our uh, sharp focus on a couple of areas right now, so we've only done those till now on a mass scale. Though pilots have been done, I think, uh, in Andhra Pradesh itself was on, uh, uh, was on uh, probably silkworms. Uh, and in Kerala, perhaps, it was on uh, fisheries. Thank you. In those areas, we work with the governments, actually. So uh, very proactive in reaching out to the governments and uh, usually Department of Agriculture uh, to see how we can take it forward in that state. Yeah, my question is about your business model. Can you explain a little bit about your business model? Is it annual subscription based or, I mean, what? Sure. So good you, question, actually. Yeah. Very good question. Uh, you can have it, uh, uh, you can have a monthly subscription, three month subscription, six months or one year. Initially, we were of the belief that most people will go for a one-month subscription, hence making our whole business model very shaky and rather non-predictive. Uh, very pleasantly surprised uh, uh, to learn that actually uh, bulk of subscriptions now are one-year subscriptions. 